With HyperContext, we're not just about better meetings, we're about helping you ensure they happen. So let me show you how. In this video, I'm gonna cover three things. The first is adding HyperContext to a meeting. The second, creating an agenda and taking some notes. And finally, some of our post-meeting automations. Once you've loaded up our app, you'll notice that we have Google or Outlook Calendar loaded up here along the side. Clicking any of these gray meetings will load a setup screen where you can add HyperContext. We're gonna start here with Bob. Now, by adding HyperContext to this meeting, we're gonna add a little link in your calendar event so you always know how to get back to this exact spot in our app. But we're also gonna add a shared and collaborative agenda for you and the attendees to add items that you wanna talk about. Just start typing. You can add as many items as you want and you can fill them up with as much detail as you want. Continue adding until you feel like you're in a good spot for your meeting. If you're ever at the point where you feel like you don't know what to talk about and you're looking for some inspiration, we've got you covered. You can click add suggestion over here or head over to suggestions in our toolbox. You'll see AI suggestions based on the type of meeting you have, who's attending, and what you've talked about historically. Maybe we wanna cover our objectives for the quarter and review the feedback we've received so far. Now, you just noticed me head over to our toolbox where we have specialized tools for all of your meeting needs. There's suggestions for content, a short list of next steps from this one meeting, goals, all of your past meeting notes, and a scratch pad where you can take some private notes. Now, let's say this meeting is ongoing and it's time for us to take some notes. Really easily, we can click on any of these agenda items and add notes. Now, just like before, this is shared and collaborative, so you can take notes, but so can the other attendees and everyone can follow along. But it's not a real meeting unless there's actions that come at the end. And if there are, it might make sense to document those as next steps. Simply click the next step button and document your next step. There, now we have a next step with an assignee and a due date. Finally, when you're done discussing an item, just click the check mark beside it. That'll let us know that you're done talking about it and you're ready for it to be archived. Okay, so when the meeting is over, HyperContext is gonna run three automations by default. First, we're gonna take all of those items that have a check mark beside it, and we're gonna archive them into the past. We'll safely store them here in your past meeting so you can always get back to them and see what you wrote later. The second thing we're gonna do is take all of these notes, next steps, and items, and we're gonna email them to everyone who attended the meeting. So you don't have to think about that. The final thing we're gonna do is set up your next agenda. Now we'll set it up based on when the next occurrence is in your calendar. So if you have a weekly one-on-one -on -one or a weekly team meeting, we'll set it up to the next week. And the agenda will look as you'd expect it to look. Those check marks will be gone, and anything without a check mark will move up in priority. It's a little assumption there that if you didn't talk about it this time, you're gonna to wanna to talk about it next time. And we'll do all of that 60 minutes after the end of your meeting. If you don't like any of those automations, you can turn any single one of them off here under automations. So that wraps up how to run a meeting on HyperContext. You should try it out on your next meeting to really feel the difference. But maybe before you do that, check out our next video on our next steps feature alone. It's a powerful workflow with ample integrations that come with it. I'll see you there.